We have our RSPs when they so first came in. So we have RSPs. In. So today you can contribute, just you can basically make a tax, the amount of, you, you contribute to an RSP in any given year, yep. you can deduct from your tax. Yep, about $20,000, 18% of your income, that's right. give or take, about that. Then there are various types of refer, uh, retirement programs, so the RSPs being most popular. Then we have the Liras, which are, um, I won't talk too much about the Liras, but will uh, basically are derived from a pension, when you cash yep. in a pension, right? But the other new one, of course, new retirement program is tax-deferred savings accounts, correct? Which is... A, an account where you contribute money to, no, no deduction, but it earns and grows tax-free. Tax -free. So it's very similar to a Roth IRA, yep. correct? Beneficiary aspects. Can, as my understanding, well, not my, I know, for example, you can designate a beneficiary of your RRSP, and, and now you can do it directly with your TSFA, depending on the province, uh, where if you designate your spouse, there's a tax rule over to your spouse. Yep. Correct? Can you design, can can you have your son or daughter? Be, can you roll it over to your son or daughter? Well the TFSA you must be able to, but I don't know. Right. You can't. You can't. Right. Okay. So But you could give them the whole thing. You could pay the tax. No, but the oh the TSFA, tax. there isn't any tax. So, no yeah, tax. so they right. could just, you get, just the take, whole get the thing. money, right? Do whatever and there's make. no gifting tax in Canada per no se, right? tax in Canada. so you can just gift it out. But your RSP, you're restricted because you can only roll it over to your spouse. Or a disabled child. Or a disabled child, correct. Yeah. So. And then when the surviving spouse dies, say that they're the recipient of the RSP, that RSP, total amount of the RSP, it's or taxable. RIF, yeah. is taxable in the year of death. Right, right now. Indeed, so if it's a million dollar RSP or RIF, say it, and the last surviving spouse dies, you're taxed at the margin on the total amount as if it was income. Yeah. Do you see it not frequently? Well, we haven't had them long, around long enough, but the thing that I that is a really intriguing deal is, of course, that I've long said that you're better off not having an RRSP. Right. And the reason you're not better off having an RRSP is because if you buy an RRSP that does really well. I'm going to use a real person because this is a real person. Right. A fellow bought Briex. He bought a thousand bucks worth of Briex. It went up to ten thousand dollars. He rolled the ten thousand dollars into his RRSP. Right. It went up to a million. It went up to a million one hundred thousand bucks, something like that. Yeah. And he died. Now, when he died, he died without a wife. That whole one million one hundred thousand dollars became taxable. Yeah. That second, at the RRSP. His daughter tried to sell the stuff right away on my recommendation. Yeah. <laughs> T.D. Waterhouse wouldn't sell it because Dad was dead. Right. So she went to Victoria, where they didn't know that Dad was dead, mm -hmm. and they sold it for her. Mm -hmm. And she sold it out at $957,000 when it had been worth a million one the day he died. Right. And of course, three weeks later, it was worth nothing. Right. She still owed $560,000 or $545,000 tax on the RRSP, but she would have owed that money regardless if it was worth nothing because the day he died, it was worth what it was worth right. that day. So having money in an RRSP and having the stock in an RRSP that goes up in value is no good because when the stock goes up in value, you've got to pay full tax rates on it. You don't get 50% rates. Right. So you have to have a balance between how much you want to be taxable and make a decision on how, how, what your tax rate is going to be, whether you want to deploy more money into a retirement program or have it grow outside on a ca and be taxed well, on a capital gain basis. If, if we talk about somebody putting... <clears throat> We haven't had this conversation. If we talk about somebody putting $5,000 a year away into an RRSP, right. and it goes 5000 this year and 5000 this year and 5000 and at the end of 10 years, you've put in $50,000 and your RRSP is worth X number of dollars. If you bought a stock or something that went up in value, right. if, we say, if we say it went up 8%. Fair enough. That's good enough? Sure. Okay. If that's the case, you would have twice as much money in your pocket as if you'd borrowed $100,000, bought the stock in the first place, and paid $5,000 a year interest right. on it because your stock would have gone, you would have had fantastic 
leverage on the money, mm -hmm. you would have paid out exactly the same amount of money out of your pocket every year. By the time you cash it in and pay the tax, you got twice as much money if you didn't buy an RRSB. Yeah. So there's pros and cons on, on doing it. Let me just bring up one thing. I, I mean, you're probably familiar with this technique and so forth, and we've used it over the years in terms of what's called an estate maximizer. When you get to a, so th the way this works is if you have a, a larger RSP, say 500,000 or a million dollars, and you know whether you're the surviving spouse or you're a couple and you're concerned about and you're planning your estate and so forth, what you can do is, is you can take out what we've done, say for example, is estimate the marginal tax would be payable yeah. upon the estate. Say, this for argument's sake, a million dollars and you're going to pay $400,000 in yep. tax. What we've done in the past and reasonably successfully is once you start to riff it, you take your RSP at age 71, now you convert it to a riff where you get annual payments. With a portion of that annual payment, we buy the cheapest term, oh, like term, life. term, term life, life insurance policy to target target the debt. Paying the tax. Paying the tax. And in some cases what we've <coughs> had done is it comes, it can be actually deducted from the RIF payment or what we've had in some cases done, the, the children pay the tax premiums. Get the children to pay it so they get the whole thing. They, well, they're going to get the whole thing anyways. Yeah. So it's their money is essence. But they get the whole thing without this paying the, with the, with the right. pay the tax. Right. Yeah. So we've had many occasions to use this type of technique and it worked reasonably effectively. The key is is that when you do take out the insurance, you have to have a reasonable degree of health. And you have to be and insurable. If you, if you wait too long, we've had this happen. I had a lady who was in her early 70s, and she had a serious case of asthma, and she was uninsurable. And she had a $600,000 tax bill, ultimately, to pay out of her retirement But holdings. the same thing's true. If you've got a summer cabin on Gabriola Island or something yeah. or other, and you want to keep the million-dollar cabin for the kids, and the kids want it, but mom and dad don't have an awful lot of money left. Let the kids buy a policy to. That's right. I think keep, it's a great strategy. Yeah. Great strategy. Absolutely. There's so, so much stuff that you can do in that, yeah, in that respect. So just to just to recap, the Canadian retirement accounts and beneficiaries. Basically, you can designate your state to be the beneficiary of your your uh, but retirement you should never, assets. But you should never designate your state because no. if you happen to go out in a blazing car accident, right. and you cause the car accident. All your money can go goes to the estate, and you're you killed five people. Then they get your money. Absolutely. You Plus, you got a, probate. Then you want to you want to name beneficiaries. So you want to name beneficiaries exactly, right? Can you name more than one beneficiary to your retirement program? Sure. Why not? Yes, you can. Right. Um, same with the TSFA. Right. You can name as many as you want. Um, so in Canada, so in Canada, we can't. You can't pass it down to your son or daughter. It's taxable at the surviving spouse's hands. Yep. Right? It does bypass probate. Yes. So in Canada, for those of you who, are, who may not know, we in Canada here have what's called a probate tax, right? When you die, the well, province... Well, probate fee. Probate fee. Which is different from every province. Right. So you're, if, if, it, if your RSP is um, <clears throat> sent to your estate, then it becomes part of your estate value, which is subject mm -hmm. to this probate fee. Seven and a half percent. Right, which can percent. be substantial yeah, can in be. a larger estate. So, be, yeah. so you do want to direct the beneficiaries. What haven't we covered on the Canadian side that perhaps... Well, I don't know. I that don't from, a, from a beneficiary <coughs> point of view... The day you die in Canada, whatever you own is deemed to have been sold unless you leave it to a wife. A spouse. It doesn't have to. It can be a same-sex spouse. It can be a uh, common-law spouse. Right. Uh, but it's deemed to be sold. So if you've got a waterfront cabin in Salt Spring Island worth a million bucks, you paid a hundred thousand for it. You had a nine hundred thousand dollar capital gain. Half of that's taxable. Four hundred fifty thousand is taxable. You're going to owe one hundred and sixty-five to two hundred thousand dollars worth of income tax on that cabin. Right. Okay. If you've got your RRSP and you're leaving it to the kids type of thing, it's a million dollars, there's going to be $440,000 tax on that million dollars. So you have to sit down and figure out what the tax is. And here's something that I can make a comment about. I've been doing this for 46 years now. I have never yet, not once, not once, and I keep on putting the challenge out, not once I've ever had a client walk in the door with their net worth, their balance sheet in front of me. Right. I've never once had them give me their worth and have a deduction on it for the tax on their RSP. Right. They never, you never do it. Well, that's what I wanted to bring it up tonight, was that there is, a, can be a large amount of tax. Oh, big, big, big. And most people don't think of it. Yeah. And